This video is sponsored by Switcher Studio, the multi-camera live streaming software for iOS devices. Link up to nine devices together to create a stunning live or pre-recorded video. Multiple angles, live editing tools, call to action overlays, lower thirds, one tap cards, and much more. Reach your audience by live streaming to multiple platforms at the same time. Perfect for live selling, worship, sports, education, and so on. Perhaps use it as a webcam for Zoom, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, or others. All the tools you need are in your pocket. Simple, fast, and effective. Check out Switcher Studio's full features through the links in the description below and get a free one month trial. Just let me show you how small this is. Zotac Magnus One. And this is, I think, 8.6 litre case or something like that. And if we put this on the side, then as you can see, the Apple One is much, much smaller than the Zotac Magnus One. Let's have a look at some of the ports then over here. We have four Thunderbolt ports, which are USB-C ports. 10 gigabit ethernet, very interesting, very important. Obviously the power cord. We have two USB type A ports, five gigabit ports. We have HDMI port, this is only 60 Hertz port. And then we have a headphone jack board. This is also for high impedance headphones. So if you're running some kind of studio headphones, you know, that need an extra power to kind of get the drivers running, then you can use this pod, no problem. Power button over here, and then a massive grill in the back over here. This is the exhaust of the device. So it comes kind of out from here and then sucked in on the bottom sides over here. As you can see this grill on the side, that's where it sucks in. There's a little plastic round trim all the way around. This is to give the actual antennas to come through. The antennas are on the side. So all the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth will come from the sides. I'm not sure if this is Wi-Fi 6E and is it Bluetooth 5.2? Not sure. If you want to open this up, Really, you've seen this Max Tech open this up. Feel free to go check them out. You can see like what's inside. Very interesting video to see out really. And there was a surprise that there is some upgrade options and not really DIY upgrade options, at least so far, but there is like some upgrades inside that we can do. But basically this is all like locked in and closed. Interestingly, there is, I think this is Kensington lock that they've put on the side here, which is, I don't know why they, they put it here. It's a little bit of an awkward place to kind of put the Kensington lock. But then on the front, you can see also that there is two USB-C ports. They are both, for me, Thunderbolt ports because I have the M1 Ultra chip inside and then an SD card slot. I went with M1 Ultra, which is 20 core CPU, and then there is 64 gigabytes of RAM and the GPU is a 64 core GPU. So basically the best CPU and GPU. And the reason I wanted to go with these and test on this channel is because Apple claimed that the GPU is better than RTX 1390. So the GPU is better than this one over here. This is ASUS Tough RTX 1390. They also claimed that the CPU is better than the 12900K. I've got both of these here. I've got the benchmark so we'll really see what this is. I'm going to plug it in, connect the screens up and then I can actually run some initial benchmarks. So let's do that and then see how good this really is in some of the initial synthetic benchmarks. Okay, the Mac Studio has been set up. We're recording the um, HDMI over here. I'm running some tests on the screen at the moment, but just, you know, we wanna get some initial tests done so we know kind of roughly where it slots in terms of the scale of things. So I've run the Cinebench R23. This is 24,000 in multi-core speeds or multi-core test, you know, score, which is very, very good. Like. It's really, really good over there. But if you're wondering like, where does this line up between, you know, the other PC processors like from Intel or AMD, then basically if you look at the 12700K, which is a 12 core 20 thread processor, this M1 Ultra is faster. The 12700K is roughly about 23,000 points, according to my testing. And Ryzen 9 5950X 16 core processor, the best that Ryzen has at this point is about 1000 points higher, about 25,000 something points and that's without the PBO enabled. If you uh, enable the PBO on the, the Ryzen chip, it like posts to 28,000 or 29,000, something like that, much, much higher. As you can see, it's very, very powerful, but if Apple says that it's as good as 12900K, that's really not the case in multi-core, you know, rendering here, as we can see in Cinebench. It's 
really not apples to apples comparison and you can really pull the number whichever way and really look at the numbers whichever way you want but basically if you look at the 20 core cpu as you can see over here 20 core cpu should be much faster than a 12 core cpu but basically on pc systems we have something called hyper threading which means we have two threads per core and it really is kind of like a smaller cores or you, can, you really have to count the threads as well because every single thread is doing the same task in, as in here whereas apple has only like 20 cores that do this test over here you can't really compare them two because the architecture is completely different one is arm and one is x86 but basically they aren't the same so if you look at the 12700k which is 12 core 20 thread cpu then you can see that really the that's like 20 cores as well if you count the threads and then this one over here then you can see that this is a little bit better than the 12700k now these aren't the full benchmarks or anything we're going to do them another time on like more in depth this is just like i want to know where does this guy slot in there and i'm going to run the benchmarks or later but just interesting to see kind of what's the initial benchmarks here by the way if you want me to test anything out for creators or if you're interested especially in something then let me know in the comments below i'd really appreciate your feedback what's like important to you what do you want me to test in this to really see how would this improve your workflow would this be a good fit for you let me know in the comments below okay the single core benchmark finished as well 1533 points over here Let's have a look. Whoa, that's quite a bit lower than 12th gen, some of these. Some of the 12th gen here chips, like the 12900K, 12700K, we are getting close to 2000 score, but that's not very good in terms of single core score, but it's completely different operating system, completely different thing, but it's still not like as good as Windows. Even the 5950X or Ryzen 5900X is better than this one over here. Uh, Ryzen 5900X, I can see some of them run 1600, 615, 619, 1573. So definitely about 100 points better, even the 5900X on Ryzen side. Another test here I want to do is let's run the CPU benchmark. I want to know how good is the CPU on Geekbench and then we can you know compare this as well. When talking about the specs for this, that's what really interests me because the Apple M1 Max, which on the laptops, as you can see, and some of the other reviewers, you know, talk about it, is very good for video editing because it's got the Apple encoders and decoders inside, especially if you're working on ProRes on uh, Final Cut or something like that. It's very, very good. But now Adobe is catching up. So the Adobe is utilizing some of the silicon as well, which is interesting to test. That's what I want to know. Is it good for people who are like on Adobe Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, doing, you know, adobe kind of uh, benchmark because i think still a lot of them and if i'm not mistaken adobe is still like the most popular program uh, used in the world in terms of the creative um, you know industries a lot of people use adobe programs so it would be interesting to know how good this is but the m1 max for this uh, mac studio starts at 1999 dollars pounds euros wherever you're from which is interesting just because now suddenly we don't have to pay three and a half grand to get an m1 max chip if you already have a monitor you know bothered about the portability aspect that's why this is interesting one thing i do want to note is if you get the m1 max then those front usb ports and thunderbolt ports they are uh, USB-C ports, I think 10 gigabit, maybe 5 gigabit ports, something like that. Another thing I'm curious is we can see like six Thunderbolt ports on the M1 Ultra chip, two in the front and uh, four in the back. What I want to know is like, how have these been configured? Are they like a hub of uh, Thunderbolt ports? Are, are they separate ones? So can we have full fat like Thunderbolt speed, like 40 gigabits per second on each of those ports at the same time? or are we combining, sharing bandwidth, so on. It will be just interesting to know this, but you can configure this from M1 Max to M1 Ultra all the way to like eight terabytes in size in terms of the storage, which this is very interesting for me. Like I don't get this one. Why is it only eight terabytes? Like Apple, do you think that creatives only need eight terabytes and that's it, that's the maximum you can't have anymore. But also if you look at the M1 Max version, that has also max configuration of eight terabytes. But if they combine two M1 Maxes together, surely if the SSD is on the SOC of the chip, then we should be getting extra, you know, 16 terabytes, if you know what I mean. But no, only eight terabytes. I'm not sure how this is configured there. 
But interestingly, if you look at Max Tech teardown of this M1 Ultra Max Studio, then you can see that there are like little SSDs that are plugged in. Apple obviously had to invent their own like M.2 slots to configure, you know, their storage. But it would have been awesome to get some kind of very standardized, you know, M.2 slot that you literally just pop in on the bottom very easily. Just flick it in there, put the lid back on and get extra storage. But no. So let's have a look at this Geekbench now then that's uh, configured here, that's completed. Whoa, now this is very interesting. The 12900K multi-core score is 18,058, but this 20 core here is 23,000. That's absolutely amazing. Now I did the Ryzen uh, Threadripper 3960X ages ago. This was probably like one of the earlier Geekbench and that one got 22,000 so this is even better than that one but obviously this is much newer Geekbench benchmark over here so I'm wondering if the Threadripper 13960X which is a 24 core processor how good that's, this would be in here. In terms of the single core performance still we can see here that the 12900K is getting close to 2000 like 1975 this is 1785 so a little bit lower but still very very powerful okay then let me finish this video here let me start with the benchmarks and you let me know in the comment section below what is of interest to you as a pc user do you want to know how does it do in video photo editing so on we're going to be doing all the usual tests but just curious if you want me to add any tests let me know in the comment section below we want to put this through the paces to really see if this is worth the five thousand pound that it cost Woo, that's quite expensive my Biggest question is, did Apple really break the kind of always, you know, barrier there that the Mac is more expensive than PC? Or because of this Mac Studio now, is it really a better idea to buy a Mac Studio for 5000 rather than build a PC for 5000 That's what I want to find out. Stay tuned, subscribe if you want to find that out as well. And... I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you in the comment section below. I'm going to leave the link for this in the description below as well if you want to check it out. Bye-bye.